joining us. Thank you. So, greetings, everyone. I am thrilled. This is like the first time ever that Back to the Body, me, Pamela Madsen, our team has done this topic at all. You know, we're always talking about arousal and orgasm and body acceptance and, you know, love your vulva, right? So we, oh, this is the vulva puppet, guys. Okay, if you've never seen the vulva puppet, here it is. Hey. Right? So those are the kinds of things we talk about. And those of you that follow me, and Kasia, please keep track of, um, Oh, we have a Harris here from Manhattan and Michelle from Colorado. And we got someone from Cancun. Wow. Okay, I'm going to stop the greeting, everyone. You can pop it in if you want to. I'm just going to just start the presentation. But we love knowing where you're from. And it's great to say hello. And, and you can post your comments. And you can post your questions. And Kashi will be tracking them in case we can't get to them in, in immediacy. We're not going to lose that. And Kasha saying hi to everyone. So there she is. You can also private message Kasha if you have a problem with any kind of technical difficulties. So back to me. <laughs> back to me. So as most people know, I'm a memoirist. You know, I wrote this great book published by Rodale, um, how I ditched the diet, got naked, found true pleasure, and somehow got home in time to cook dinner shameless. And so I've been talking, yes, those are my legs. Um, I've been talking about things that make people feel sh shameful for really most of my life. When I founded the American Fertility Association, people didn't want to talk about infertility because it was shameful and it was stigmatized. And people still don't like to talk about it. And when my children were born, people, who were friends of mine who also had children through in vitro didn't want people to know that their children were born through in vitro because they thought people wouldn't want to marry their kids. And so that was 30 years ago. And then when I started to talk about sexuality, you know, 15,000 followers on Facebook and people read, but I get the most comments and likes when I don't actually say the word sex when I talk around it. And that's because people are still have some shame getting better around sex. So I've been a bridge for fertility. I've been a bridge for a decade now around embodiment and sexuality. And guess what? <laughs> I'm getting older. I'm in my fifties now. And I am more embodied, and frankly, I don't want to embarrass the lovely doctor and Jamie, um, more erotic and sexual than I've ever been in my life. And my body's changing without my permission. And I'm not ready and I'm not liking it. And that's okay. And people aren't, people are doing all kinds of stuff with hormone replacement therapy, with body modifications, which I prefer calling it that than plastic surgery, even though Dr. Schaefer worked very hard to have, to be certified in two, you have two board certifications, right, Dr. Schaefer? Yes, yeah, general surgery and plastic surgery. Yes, and I'll be introducing these guys in a minute. Um, so people hide the fact that they're doing this because there's shame around it. And I just want to call bullshit on that. And when we hide and we put things in shame, what happens is we don't get good information. We don't learn about what's available. We actually hurt each other when we don't talk and share about what's available in the world. So here's what's true. I know you know that from me, right? Here's what's true. I, during COVID, was doing a lot of traveling and I was working like really hard during COVID. I know crazy shit, but I was. And 
somehow I gained another 25 pounds while I was dieting and exercising and working really, really hard. And I was getting this belly that I didn't understand. It was all this belly fat. And dieting and exercise wasn't working for me. And I went to see a specialist about this. And basically they said, good luck to you. And this was an anti-aging metabolic specialist who basically said that there was no hope for me and that I would just have to live with the belly because that's what God gave me. And so for $2,000, um, I basically was told, go off, be menopausal and good luck to you. And that wasn't acceptable to me because I felt that there were answers. And so I started to research. And then while that was going on, while that was going on, I started to notice that it was getting harder to see. And I'll show you, okay? I'll get really close. My upper eyelid is starting to go over my eye. Do you see that? Is that close enough for you? It's like, yeah, it's like this. It's like getting hooded. And so, you know, it's harder to see during the throes of my fantastic orgasms. And I want my eyes to be bright open and excited. And my, my body wasn't quite cooperating with what I needed and what I wanted. And while I was at it and complaining about some of the changes in, the, in my body that I wasn't digging. I mean, I'm allowed to say that. You're allowed to say you don't like something. You know, a hundred years ago, you were stuck with whatever you had, right? If you wanted, you couldn't really color your hair. You couldn't do anything around aging. You would think you had no choice. What you had was what you had. If you were infertile, you remained infertile. If you had a bad sex life, you remained with a bad sex life. If you didn't, if your embodiment, how you matched on the inside didn't match the outside, you were stuck with it. And now people are not stuck. There are choices. There are fantastic cutting edge things going on. It's not your mother's body, body modification techniques. It's not your mother's hormone replacement. It's not anything that you've ever heard about. And it's exciting. I'm so turned on by it. Can you tell how excited I am about this? And so I was researching doctors from California to Texas to New York and different programs because I travel. I could go anywhere. You can go anywhere. You know, get on a plane, buy a ticket. You do that to come to my retreats. You fly all over the world to come to my retreats. So I researched and then a friend a very good friend said, wait a minute, do you know about the Schaefer Clinic in your neighborhood? And I was like, well, no, I don't know about the Schaefer Clinic in my neighborhood. Um, not quite my neighborhood, Fifth Avenue and 40 something street and 45th, I may have been, 44th. I may have been there almost every day this week. You think I would know? That? And I was introduced to Dr. David Schaefer Schaefer and to Jamie Gable, who runs the um, metabolic and a hormonal program and David Schaefer, who owns the entire operation and is the plastic surgeon or body modification specialist. And I went for a consultation. And I would love, you know, we start with hormones and then go to body modification. How does that work guys? So Jamie, who's on the top there, is the director. And say the name of the program for me. The, the name is Advitum. Advitum. And what does that mean? So it's Latin and it means to life. To life. Yes. And you're in the same building as and a part of, and thank you for posting the link, Kasia, um, part of the same program that Dr. Sh that Dr. Schaefer owns and directs, correct? That's correct. And I don't mean to gush, but when I first walked in, so I believe that context is everything. 
Like, what's the container like? Because I run retreats and we're very focused on the container. So when I walked in to your offices, it was such a different experience than any experience I've ever had walking into a medical office. So if you're a little new agey, I mean, there's most incredible crystals everywhere. There's not just water. You have your coconut water, your Diet Coke, your juice. You know, I just sat and looked at the beverage bar. And, um, and then I was welcomed in by this incredible staff and felt so safe um, in your building. And the context and the beauty let me know, felt, helped me like relax and know that I was going to be okay. And so, Jamie, would you talk a little bit about when I came to you and what you told me and the program you have me on? And I want to share that with all of you because most of you are like me in some way. Insulin resistance is up. Belly fat is up. Just turn on the TV. This is not just what you're putting in your mouth. So, Jamie, will you talk about what you're doing with me and how you're supporting me and what people can do. And then Dr. Schaefer will talk about, oh my God, what you're gonna be doing with me on August 3rd. Uh -huh. Sure. And what, you, what you'll be offering at the clinic to other people. So, you know, what we did is, is what we do for, for everybody. And we start out by talking and, and I get a good sense for uh, what you're going through. And um, we spent time together. We spend an hour together so that it's not just so, uh, you know, let me, let me just prescribe something to you and get you out of the office. We ha I have to learn about you and, and hear what, what your concerns are, what you're going through. And it's really comprehensive. And so we did, we spoke and you told me what your issues are and what your concerns are. And one of those being, uh, insulin resistance, which is really, really common, um, especially as we age. And there's many reasons and, and not to get too scientific, uh, but the way it works is insulin resistance is basically when your body, for, for whatever reasons, numerous reasons, some can be inherited or some can just be age related, but the cells are not doing what they're supposed to, uh, which is when there's sugar in your blood, your body releases insulin and then it takes that sugar and it wants to utilize it in say your muscle cells. Uh, and when it becomes more, uh, I should say less efficient, when your body becomes less efficient in utilizing sugar, the sugar just gets, just starts floating around the body and causes problems. And one of the biggest problems is weight gain. And it, then after that, it can be obesity and diabetes. So. So I knew that was a concern of yours, uh, like it is with so many of my patients. And, um, you know, we basically put out a plan. Uh, it's always a stepwise approach, right? There's, there's some steps to it. I wanted you to lose a little bit of weight quickly so you can feel good and feel motivated to continue. Um, so we, we started with a little plan that involves a fasting diet kit. Um, and with that kit, which is more than just, by the way, uh, this, so Prolon is the name of this kit. And, uh, and it's not just about, okay, I'm not eating calories, so I'm not going to gain weight. It's, it's scientifically designed to reset your cells in so many ways. Uh, cells go through a process every 24 hours of checks and balances and cleaning themselves so that they can function well. And when they're not functioning well, they don't do these processes well. So we started with this kit to uh, rejuvenate your cells. And in doing that, I think we lost five or six pounds of fat in the excuse first- me. Uh, Excuse me, let's be accurate here. I lost, in five days, I lost seven pounds of fat and I gained one pound of muscle. Get that, I gained a pound of muscle in five days. That's how long the fast is. And there was, it's, it's a, you get food, you get a little box. There are five boxes and I've never had a weight loss like that. And I wasn't exercising because Jamie said not to. And, um, and I had an extraordinary result. I just also want to pipe in, James, that he took my blood 
you know, we waited for my blood results to come in. He was able to analyze that. He put me on this extraordinary machine um, that I've never seen like this in my life. Um, can you talk about that machine, Jamie? Sure. Yeah, so we, it, this is a body composition analyzer. So uh, it's high tech and it uh, takes a look at how much body fat you have, how much skeletal muscle mass you have, uh, visceral fat, which is fat behind the muscles that's close to the organs, which can be dangerous if too much, uh, looks at your BMI. And with that, we get a baseline of where you're starting at. Um, and there's some, a few more components to it, but it's a really, really important uh, to be on any of these pro programs to be able to, to follow you with actual data. And, um, and so that was just the beginning of the process. Uh, we did take your blood and we did a full workup and we looked at a lot of different things. And just because you had that result so fast, that helps with your, your motivation and your mental capacity for the next step, which is uh, some other types of uh, medications that, you know, if you want me to talk about, I can. Or what of course we want, we want to hear, they want you to spill the tea, but we do have a, have a question. There's a woman um, who wrote that she has type one diabetes and an and A1C of 7.2 and would, would a program like this support her that I'm on? Yes, um, you know, it's very hard to give uh, specific, specific medical advice, uh, you know, in this type of situation, but yes, there are diabetics and type one diabetics that do use uh, Prolon. Um, you want to consult with your doctor or, or your clinician first so that they're aware of it in case they need to adjust any of your medications as you will not be uh, receiving as much carbohydrates during that time. So as long as they're aware of it, uh, absolutely, it helps a lot. I was diagnosed with pre-diabetes. And that's a part of the reason why we're doing this is that we don't want me to, to move into diabetes. And so many women, especially women in their in their 50s and 60s are being diagnosed right now with prediabetes. I mean, basically the doctors never heard of menopause until recently because we were dead. We died in our, in our, in our 30s and our 40s. And women are living so much longer and doctors didn't have experience with our bodies. And now it feels like the technology um, and the experience is catching up with what midlife women need. And so you can, you're doing some other really cool stuff for me that I would love for you to talk about. Could you, could you talk about the medication and the, that, I'm gonna, that I'm starting and the hormones sure. that I'm on? Sure, so, so the next part of, of this process was what else can we do to improve your insulin sensitivity um, and help you to me metabolize body fat better and we checked your hormones. And we found that your hormone levels were low. And so we decided to put Pamela on a bioidentical hormone replacement. And there are many different ways to do this. Uh, the way that we think is the best way and, and we get very good results uh, is by using uh, bioidentical hormone pellets. And these pellets uh, are inserted underneath the skin <laughs> Uh, to the outside of the buttock area. And this will deliver uh, a certain amount of uh, hormones uh, for the next three to four months. And the thing that makes this unique, which you, you may not hear from uh, your typical OBGYNs, is that we actually put some testosterone in there as well. Um, and I think that for women uh, has really, is really um, neglected. And many traditional medicine doctors don't realize that um, women do need testosterone, not the same amount of testosterone as men, uh, but they do need it and they do so much better on it uh, when it comes to energy, sex drive, um, losing body fat, uh, building muscle. And, and every time, and to build muscle it takes energy. So you end up utilizing some of the body fat to do this. Uh, so that was what we did uh, just, uh, was it a few days ago or was it? Uh... Yeah, I've I'm, I'm, I'm got my little boo-boo. Uh, so I just want to make sure everyone's like really hearing this. 
So the testosterone and a little bit, tiny bit of estrogen that Jamie has me on. For those of you who feel like you have low libido, um, for those of you um, also who are having trouble with your metabolism, um, that's gonna help you a lot. Now, those of you who know me know that I don't have a problem with my libido. But can you imagine? Like through the embodiment work that I've done and so many of you have done with me, despite my lower hormones, I'm incredibly embodied and erotic. Now, I'm gonna get testosterone. I can't wait to find out how much more I have in my body. So even if you are a woman who has good libido, but you're having these other issues, you can have more. And I want you just to know that, that whatever you're having, you can actually have more. And isn't that an extraordinary thing? You don't mind that I put that in, Jamie, do you? Because it makes me, I can't wait to see the more that I will be having. I'm glad you said that too, because today I had a woman who came in and she's 62 years old and, and we put pellets in her. And um, when we, when I spoke to her initially, she, she wasn't complaining about libido uh, or sex drive uh, or sexual performance. Um, and there were some other reasons and, and we decided to, to go with the pellets. And today, uh, our first follow-up visit six weeks later, she was so excited because her sex drive increased and improved uh, as well as vaginal lubrication. And so even though she initially didn't think that she had a problem uh, with libido, she feels, her words to me was, I feel alive again. She says, men used to look at me and, and I would be, eh, you know, okay, whatever. And she says, now they're looking at me and I'm really interested in looking back at them. And she was so happy and, and, and really didn't realize that, that she could feel like this again. So sometimes you don't know that, you know, it's, it's a little bit low. You don't know what you're gonna experience. Exactly. And then the, the next thing, which I think is really big for people, I know is that one of the things I'm very, very excited about um, is, well, can you say it? Cause I only know brand names and you're having this compounded. Okay. Uh, so can you talk about the medication that I'm gonna be starting next week that sure. help my body metabolize my food and help with the insulin resistance? Sure, so uh, it's a medication that the, the generic name is called semaglutide. And you may see advertisements uh, on TV for Ozempic. Uh, Ozempic is a brand that makes this medication. Um, however, it's very difficult to get it sometimes covered by insurance uh, because it's very expensive. And so uh, there are some compound pharmacies that will make uh, the same medication with a few little adjustments in there that are uh, for the clinician to uh, deal with and handle, but it's the exact same medication. And this is an excellent medication that not only was uh, FDA approved for diabetes, but just more recently was approved for obesity. Um, but you don't have to be obese to, to use this medication. And it really, really helps. It takes a little time to build up uh, to the right dosage in your system. Um, it does a few different things. One of those things is it slows down the gastric emptying of, of food in your stomach. So you start to feel full uh, faster and you don't want to continue eating. Um, and, and another way to just kind of sum it up, not too scientific, is that it really works well with utilizing your sugar so it doesn't sit around, do nothing, and cause more fat. So it's, it's really a nice... Um, a nice addition to a program. My friend who has um, been on this, been on this um, regime for about a year now, she's not as hungry. Um, she's lost over 20 pounds slowly over the year. Um, she just showed me her before and after from a year ago and it's extraordinary. And she's so excited for me um, to start this um, protocol because it's gonna help with my hunger. And you know, I've been doing Weight Watchers and working out for two years and getting fatter. And this is gonna help what I'm actually doing support me. And those of you who know me know that I get naked in front of everyone. 
and do live demos. And I love my body. I think everything that we're going to be talking about tonight, come into it loving your body, really loving your body. And from this place of love, deciding what you want to do with your body. These are very personal choices. And it's from this space of really loving my body and really loving my eroticism that I'm doing this. And I don't want to go into diabetes. And I am so tired of diet and exercise not working. And this is going to give me the boost. And I want you all to know about it. So that if you're having the same frustrations that I'm having, to know that there could be a solution for you out there. And I think, I mean, that's so exciting to me. It's been just, it's been approved um, for PCOS and insulin resistance for a long time. It was just approved and recognized for obesity. So the FDA is sanctioning this. So this isn't some fringe thing um, that's going on. This is available and FDA approved. And I'm so excited, I can't stand it. I like bother Jamie like every day. Like, is, is it in, is it in? Can I, can I come get it? Can I come get it? You know, I'm like a dog with a bone. And just to sum it up, Jamie, you're doing a few other things for me. And then I would love to introduce Dr. Schaefer and, and have him talk about um, what he's doing with, with the aesthetics at the clinic. Sure. Uh, yeah, so we're, we, we're starting with those two uh, types of treatments and we're gonna follow you. We've added uh, somewhat of a little bit of exercise advice uh, to keep going. Um, and um, there are a few other things that, that we might uh, work in there as we go. Um, there could be a growth hormone releasing peptide, um, which we didn't talk that much about, but uh, that, that's another topic, but it brings up the topic of peptides which is something that we're going to do with you uh, as you do some work with Dr. Schaefer. And so again, to try not to be too scientific, peptides are in your body. They're chains of amino acids, typically short between two and 50, and they're signaling molecules and they tell your cells to how to do certain things. And uh, as we age, they, or toxic environment, uh, as, uh, there are factors that uh, make our bodies less efficient at using our, our peptides. So we have uh, bioidentical peptides that we are going to introduce uh, to Pamela uh, before her procedures uh, with Dr. Schaefer. Um, and these specific peptides are to help with wound healing and uh, help accelerate and, um, and really help her healing process through her procedures. So they're excellent for skin, uh, for hair, for healing, for wounds, uh, and we'll probably uh, hook her up as well to a post-operative uh, vitamin drip so that when she comes out of the operating room, we can give her some vitamins and amino acids that can immediately start uh, working on her repair process. So everyone knows that we have a retreat in Santa Fe in mid-September and I've got to be ready to go for that. <laughs> so, but as, as you're listening to this, everyone, are you hearing things you've never heard before and things that are, that will support you? We have a, a couple of questions that I think we should answer. Um, so there's a question about thinning hair in women in menopause. And, it, and um, you know, Linda is just saying that it, it just is just really um, continuing to shed. And is some of the, the work that you're doing, can that help with thinning hair in menopausal women? She's 57. Yes. Um, you know, thinning hair can be caused by so many different factors and it's so frustrating for people. Uh, first, everybody checks the thyroid and, and sometimes you find, well, my thyroid's okay. Uh, why is my hair thinning? And, and I think a lot of times we don't have the exact answer. Um, stress, uh, there's so many things. So there are some peptides that we use that uh, have been working really nicely. Um, and these peptides are injected um, 
into the body, so uh, into the fat. It doesn't have to be injected into the scalp. Um, it can be injected into the fat, but we also sometimes do some procedures to facilitate a little bit of uh, bleeding in the scalp. So we do a procedure uh, where we microneedle the scalp with a device that creates a little bit of bleeding in the scalp. And then we apply some of these peptides to that area. And we also inject some of the peptides. And then sometimes we also do PRP with that as well, which is platelet rich plasma, where we take some blood out of the body, um, spin it in a special machine and separate growth factors. And we, we also microneedle those growth factors in here. Um, and you do this treatment, let's say once every four weeks uh, for about four months or so. And then sometimes you do some maintenance in between. Um, it's, uh, we've been doing really nicely with people with this. But PRP for hair restoration isn't brand new and it's been around, but the way we do it by um, implementing peptide therapy into the program, I think is making a huge difference. Jamie, I private I messaged you a question. I, 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 I didn't want to mispronounce the question. Yes. Yes, they're the same. They're just- Can you, say, can you state the question? Sure. Uh, the question was, is Sexenda and Ozempic equal in uh, effect? Um, yes, and they've both been around uh, for a while. Um, and if I'm, let me just, um, you, you, you mean are they equal in, in effect because they're two different brands or? They're, they're, two, they're two different drugs, but they're in the same family. So Saxenda is liraglutide, which is actually I used quite a bit before uh, Ozempic was available. And I've had incredible results um, with that. But in the studies, Ozempic shows to be even a little bit better. And it's, you do Ozempic once a week, whereas uh, Saxenda is usually taken more often, more often the injections. Yeah. And I'm going to be taking a version of Ozempic that your pharmacy is compounding. Correct. Okay. There's another, we'll do one more, and then I we're going to just move on. And, and you keep posting your questions, though, and we'll try to follow up. Um, um, one woman posted, um, I did buy Biotai TE, it's B-I-O-T-E, for about two years. It was great until the last time when the testosterone was crazy out of balance. So I stopped about six months ago and hot flashes are creeping back into my life. And okay. my thyroid is okay. Um, do you have any thoughts for her? Sure, so BioT is, is just another company who does pellets and, and they've been around uh, for a while as well. Um, the system that I use is, is uh, called Pelicom, and they've designed some things in this system that really help us clinicians to, um, to dose uh, appropriately. And either, either system you use, you have to just pay attention. And sometimes the hormones can go a little bit over the top. So um, I wouldn't give up because you might've had a bad experience um, using BioT. Um, I think that it just has to be reworked. The dosage will have to be adjusted. Um, and, um, you, you know, I, I've, I've seen this before. And if, if, if you give it another shot uh, with a little bit of a different approach, it, you might, you know, you might actually be happy that you did. You know, what I find, Jamie, is like my experience with the other doctor, is sometimes you just need a, a fresh set of eyes to look at your case and look at your, I mean, I brought you the blood work from the other doctor and you were able to compare it. Um, I mean, it wasn't like what I did was like, you know, crap, right? You just, you didn't give me anything to help me. Um, but sometimes with, from your sexuality, you know, you know how we, we always change practitioners at Back to the Body. So the women work with different um, different somatic sex educators at the retreat. We rotate them around. And the reason is, is that we want to do, we want fresh eyes um, supporting each person. It's the same thing with our medical care. That if something wasn't working, whether the testosterone was out of control and all the things, well then go see someone else. Don't just give up. Get another set of eyes, get a consultation. Um, because 
if I had just listened to that one doctor and didn't go any further, I would still be stuck. And now I'm excited, turned on, um, you know, it, I'm beside myself with happiness. So don't give up, get a second opinion. Jamie and the Schaefer system, I mean, I know where, you, where, where some of you live, local to you, and sometimes it's worth getting on a plane or a train um, and spending a day in New York and getting the right center on your side. The same way you fly to me in Iceland or Santa Fe or Costa Rica, you fly to me because you know that what I've got is cutting edge and works. The same thing with stuff like this. Get on a plane, a train, go see the people, get a second pair of eyes on you. So now we're going to shift to the body modifications of the plastic surgery piece of the journey that I'm on, which I would just want to say to everyone, that's the most edgy thing for me to talk about. I actually feel a little emotional talking about it. Um, because there's more judgment around this than there is around hormone replacement. Or you can say, well, I'm pre-diabetic and, you know, all these like medical things. And, and look how I even pointed immediately to see, look, there's really a problem. You know, it's not my vanity. Well, it is my vanity. <laughs> and, you know, to own that, you know, to say, look, I'm enjoying this body and I want to, I'm, I, I want to continue to enjoy it at the height and in the way, just the way I dress myself and the jewelry that I wear and how I adorn myself is a part of my identity. You know, how I choose to cut my hair, how I choose to, you know, show up in the world is my choice. Like, just like it was my choice to do in vitro. And I, and I feel my own defensiveness rising even before we begin the conversation. And I think it's really important to name that because that's the shame. And that's why people don't talk about that stuff because other women judge you. They may be doing it too, but they'll judge you. And so I made choices and I'm doing it and I'm, I'm scared. And I trust Dr. Schaefer in the Schaefer Clinic. And Dr. Schaefer, I'd love for you to talk about your clinic, like in an overall sense, because what you've done is you've put together really a holistic center um, to support people in supporting their bodies in the way they want to support it. And then I'm open to you talking about what we're going to do for me on, on August 3rd. Great. Yeah, so uh, hi, I'm Dr. David Schaefer. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon in New York City. And essentially, I started Schaefer Clinic as a one stop shop, everything from the inside out. So the inside is the metabolic improvements that, that Jamie works on. We have the skin and laser center where we work on the surface of the skin, texture and color of the skin. And then our whole plastic surgery center where we do the body shaping, facelift, anything, any, anything from head to toe involving uh, plastic surgery and dermatology and metabolism. And so it's a one-stop shop for everybody. And we take everybody as if they're a member of our family. So I, I, I heard your description of when you came into the office and you felt safe and comfortable and um, taken care of. And that's great to hear because that's our goal with every patient when they come in. I trained at the Mayo Clinic where you don't just treat a patient as a disease or as a diagnosis, but you treat the whole patient. And it's a whole team of people who take care of the patient. So I modeled my clinic after where I did my um, initial training and all within the realm of beauty and metabolism and aesthetics. And so my part that I do is the plastic surgery. And that's how we met a couple of weeks ago. And you, you, know, you, you say that um, how people look on the outside you, you know, my goal is to help them look on the outside, how they're feeling on the inside. It's not just, your body isn't just the outside, it's the inside too. But we're, we're able to try to find a balance between the two. And a lot of people, as they're aging or they're tired or living through this pandemic, they start looking in the mirror and on Zoom and you, you, they take their fingers and they start going like this on their chin or their eyes. And uh, 
that you're not changing necessarily your body where you're making yourself into a different person, but we're just kind of revealing what's underneath that skin. So you, so you don't have to feel bad about, about what you're doing. And for your procedure, especially, at, you know, first you started out talking about your eyes. And I think that's important because that's the first thing we notice when we look at somebody, we see their eyes. And do they look uh, vibrant? Do they look um, excited? Do they look tired? Do they look sad? You, you know, and, and so that's a really great um, area to focus on with the plastic surgery. But if you have this extra skin hanging over, it's kind of hiding you behind that. And so we're removing that to reveal what's behind there. And what's behind there is beautiful person, beautiful eyes, and uh, it's a great surgery to do. So with you, we're going to do your upper eyelid so that we can see your eyelid. And then we're going to do your lower eyelid just to, just to smooth out. So we have a smoother, what we call lid cheek junction. So it's a nice, youthful position of the eyelid. But then we're going to do your face as well. And um, definitely, especially everybody who's been on Zoom for the last year and a half, you're staring at your neck all day long, right? And so you take your, your uh, fingers and you start pushing it like, oh, my neckline is going to look a little bit better. Or my, um, what we call the cervical mental angle. So this angle right here, a lot of people have a straight line from their chin down to their clavicle and there's no neck, right? And so... And uh, everybody, you know, most people are somewhere in between. But what we're going to do is what we call a lower facelift. And in that surgery, if you tighten up your muscles like this, if you see here, are two muscle bands here and two here. So we're going to make a small incision around your ears, a small incision under your chin. We're going to separate the skin from these muscle bands. And then we're going to sew these two bands together underneath of the skin. What that's going to do is define your cervical mental angle. And then this band here and this band here, we're gonna take that and we're gonna tack it up behind your ears. And so that's gonna make a really nice swing that goes underneath of your neck to hold everything up in place. So you're gonna have a nice jawline, a great cervical mental angle, your cheeks just slightly pulled back and then refreshed eyes. So basically we're just gonna reveal what's on the inside. Love that. So I don't know if, I just wanna say that everyone can really hear what, um, Dr. Schaefer is saying. So what he's saying is that he's not interested in um, he's not interested in um, changing my appearance, like my canvas, my face. Um, we're not going to turn me into somebody else. What he's going to do is help keep um, help me stay revealed in my own palate, in my own body, that is familiar to me, and that I'm feeling uncomfortable with the changes. And so when you start telling those of you who travel with me and know me, we, we travel with a photographer. When I started to tell my photographer, could you Photoshop that? Could you smooth that out? That really brought attention to me that I was developing a kind of self-consciousness that didn't fit with who I want to be in the world. I don't want to be self-conscious. I want to continue to adorn and love and worship my body, which is really good to me. This body is so good to me. And I want to keep nourishing it in all the ways that my body and I have agreed are good choices. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a lower fit. Look, is he, I really went in because I wanted my neck done, okay? It was just about my neck and my eyes. And so what he explained to me is that it's really a lower face list is what it is. Yep. And um, what? And so I'm going to be staying um, at the Schaefer Clinic overnight. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have a private nurse on duty, making sure that I'm doing well. And I leave the next morning with no drains, no anything. And I rest for about two weeks, right? Yeah, and re resting, that means, you know, you're, you're not exercising or raising your blood pressure, but even after a day or two, you're already back on your computer, on your phone, you, you know, doing, doing the things you do, you're just letting your body heal because the, the body's great at healing, and especially when we combine it with the uh, Jamie services, with the perioperative uh, supplements and antioxidants and vitamin boosters. Uh, it really helps heal. And when you see people who combine everything together, they really have a much smoother healing and recovery process than somebody who just tries to tough through it. Is this the most popular thing that you see in midlife women? 
you, you know, I'll tell you, it's very popular because every, not just women, but men too. Everybody, you know, you, you start looking in the mirror and it's not, the, like I was saying, it's not how, how you imagine yourself on the inside, but and you start looking at yourself and, you know, after about 40, everything starts to uh, droop. Your collagen is um, breaking down, your elastin fibers in your skin, kind of like our internal rubber bands are starting to stretch out and you, you don't have as much uh, recoil in your skin. And you start taking a, taking a look at yourself in the mirror and you start pushing and you're like, I look a little bit better like this. And even, even with my face, when you look at these lines here and I just push a little bit and the line disappears, it softens up, it makes a big difference. So, you know, there's, there's different treatments that we do and we customize it depending on what the patient needs and their goals, their expectations, their time for recovery, their budget. You know, we have, we have something for everybody and, and then we work with you. And it's not a one-stop shop. It's not where you come in we do everything and then we never see you again. We wanna partner with you, come up with a plan with you. And we have a series of, of treatments and specialists that you see to achieve your goal. I'm gonna have um, you include laser with the plastic surgery. Um, so after my surgery, they're gonna be doing some laser treatments. So that will reduce the appearance of any surgery, surgical lines, correct? Definitely, so after surgery, my job isn't done the day of surgery. So we continue to follow you. We make sure you're healing well. And then in month one, two, and three, we have you see our laser specialist. And what they're gonna do is treat any of your incisions. And we have more than 30 different lasers that we use for patients, depending on what you need. So if the incisions look red, then we can do something that pulls the red out. If they look brown or pigmented, we can do that if they're thicker. So everybody heals differently. I could do the same surgery in a hundred different people and they heal a hundred different ways. And that's why we have to customize what we're doing for each patient. I, want, I just want to acknowledge there are some women who are still asking some questions around hormones. Um, Janelle will answer those questions. So hang in there, we'll come back. I just want to ask Dr. Schaefer a few more questions. So some of the other things women have told me about that they're curious about um, is this like ice thing that you do to, to reduce that and yep. I know that's offered I don't at your clinic but I don't know the name of it yep. and how effective you think it is what sure. is it called sure so, so there's a couple different treatments you can do and, and when you're talking about fat reduction there's anywhere from non-invasive like cool sculpting which you're referring cool to cool sculpting yep. yeah and then surgical like liposuction which we do all the time too and it's not just you choose which one you want and that's what you do we have to evaluate you and see which one is better for your body so Cool sculpting is great for somebody who's already in pretty good shape that just have trouble areas. So like a little bit on the hips, a little bit of the lower abdomen, those kind of things. It's not gonna achieve what liposuction can do where we can take out an incredible you know, amount of fat and sculpt the body. So, and sometimes we do it in combination. So we'll do liposuction and then smaller areas we can do cool sculpting. So again, it's really evaluating the patient, seeing what they need to have done, what their goals and expectations are, and then planning uh, the surgical plan or the non-invasive plan for them. And it's not just machines for melting fat. We also have machines that can build up muscle. So we have another machine called M-Sculpt. And what that does, you put it on the body in the area that you wanna treat and it uses this electromagnetic energy. And in half an hour, it's equivalent to doing 20,000 sit-ups. So you come in- second. Wait a second, wait a second. How come I wasn't told about that? Well, that'll be next, right? Uh... <laughs> so what's the name of that? Can you say it more slowly, please? Yeah, so that, that's M-Sculpt, E-M-S-C-U-L-P-T. -E and basically- M -Sculpt. Yeah, do you remember those pictures from the 50s where the people would sit on those machines and would rub their, you know, they'd rub their body real fast or- uh, it looked, it looked like these crazy mechanisms. So it, it's kind of like that, but very high tech and actually works. So basically what it's doing is sending these electromagnetic um, energy pulses to your muscles. So it's focused right on the muscle and at the microscopic level, contracting the muscle fibers. So basically you sit there, it feels like kind of almost like a light static electricity kind of feeling. But but again, like over about half an hour, it's equivalent to about 20,000 sit-ups. You can do it on your abdomen, you can do it on your butt to lift your butt to improve the, the strength of your glutes and other parts of your body, your thighs, uh, you know, basically anywhere there's muscle. So the combination of melting the fat and then building up the muscle can really give a great result for people. I'll be in tomorrow. <laughs> um, I'm, like, I'm, 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 you know, you kind of kept this a secret. I yep. <laughs> about this. Yep, yep. So I'm really glad we're doing the webinar. So that everyone can learn about this and me too. 
Um, the two other questions I have, and then I will ask, and, and guys stay on because these guys have some special offers for you. If you want to have a consultation, um, I asked them if they would do a little discount for the women about to the body and or people who just joined this call, even if you're not in my programs, a back to the body discount. So stay tuned, we'll be posting. In fact, Kasha, if you wanna just put putting up the links for that, um, for um, so they can make contact with the programs. And um, you're offering um, like 10% off of non-invasive non -invasive procedures. Yes, so, so people people who contact us through this program, well, you'll come in, you'll have a consultation, and then if you want to do that M sculpt or the cooler sculpt, then we're offering them 10% off their first treatment. So it's a great way to come in, try those treatments, and and see how you like them. And and Jamie, it's it's a similar thing for you. That they, they'll they get a discount off of the initial consultation. And then 10% off of uh, any of the packages if they decide to do uh, a treatment uh, with us. Um, of course, we'll, we'll do the body composition uh, analysis for free. Um, and, um, and also if you do uh, contact, just make sure you put in that you're from back to the body so that we know, and then we can you know, extend what we want to extend to you. Uh, Terrific. Um, and again, I'm holding two hormones. Janelle, I know I've got your question in my hands. Um, I just want to ask two other, I think, common body modification questions, Dr. Schaefer. Sure. Two other complaints that um, women have is it's really about restoration. So mm -hmm. I've had two cesarean sections. Mm -hmm. So women who've had cesareans, and there's a lot of them, um, you know, they, they cut us, they take our baby, and they just leave it okay. on your own. You yep. now have a ripped abdomen and you get the wedge. Yeah, you get a shell. Bump. Yeah. You get the bump. So what's available today for women with the tummy tucks? How is it different that tummy tucks were done in the past? And what can women expect from that? And again, people do it for lots of reasons, but a lot of women do it because they want to restore their bellies to what it was before um, the doctor made a new hole for the baby to come out. Yeah, definitely. And with, with tummy tuck, especially after pregnancy, your rectus muscles separate. So if you look at if you look at your abdomen, the muscles are normally like this together. When you're pregnant, they separate like this. So to accommodate for, for the baby. And so during the tummy tuck, what we're doing is sewing those muscles back together. So flattening the muscle. If you, if you don't have those muscles together, you're always gonna have a roundness a roundness to the belly right here and so there's no exercise you can do to make those muscles go back together because the muscle fibers run up and down but the separation is to the side so we put those stitches in there to sew the muscle back together so whether it's just from pregnancy or the c-section where you already have that incision at the bottom of your abdomen a tummy tuck is the way to go to treat it so there's no there's no real non-invasive way to make those muscles go back together in midline and there's no way to improve that shell for hump that you get after the after the C-section. It's a very common thing. But after they take the baby out, again, they're just closing the skin to, to uh, close it, but their attention isn't on the cosmetics or the aesthetics of that incision. So there's two things we can do. One is a mini tum tummy tuck, and we're basically cutting that cesarean section uh, incision away and then reclosing the skin. When they close it during the C-section, they're only closing it in one or two layers. So you get this kind of indentation. But when we do a tummy tuck, we, we close all three layers separately. So the bottom, the middle, and the top. So you can get a smoother result. If they don't close that middle layer, then you get this kind of folding in that which you're describing that shelf or bump that you get with C-section. So doing a has better- tummy tuck, Has the technology changed? Is, is the healing easier? Is it still so painful? Yeah. Um, well, how has it changed from, let's say, 10 years ago? No, I, I mean, there's definitely advancements. There's more understanding of the anatomy and how we can put it together better. There's also better medications that we can inject and treat you with during the procedure so that it makes the recovery easier. Anesthesia has made a big uh, leap forward over the last 10 to 20 years also. So we're able to do 
better anesthesia. We even have patients where we've done spinals for the surgery. So you're not even asleep for the surgery. So just a, an epidural, kind of like when, you, when, you have, when, you, when you're have when you having your baby, we could do the whole surgery with that. So you can be wide awake or have a little bit of sedation, but you're paralyzed and numb from kind of the chest down. And then we're able to do the, the procedure. And then also different procedures that we combine at the same time, whether we're doing some liposuction to contour the edges, or um, just doing the, the tummy tuck, um, either, either one. But again, it's not where you just come in and say, I want this procedure or that procedure. We really have to evaluate you and do the procedure that's best for you. So it, it's not, uh, we partner with the patients, explain the different procedures that we can do and help them find the best one to fit what they're looking for. So, so what I'm hearing you say, and I just want everyone to hear that there are non-invasive and invasive. So. There's, there's two ways to come at the aesthetics. And so if you come and had a consultation, you would help the, the client figure out how they would build their treatment plan. Correct. So, okay. so if you had muscle separation, the diastasis where you have the roundness of the belly, you have to have surgery. There's no, there's no way around that. If it's just that you have a little bit of extra skin or a little bit of extra fat, then maybe some of the non-invasive treatments would, would be good for you. Okay, so um, so Howard is asking, are patients guided post-surgery how to develop healthy lifestyle practices, the nutrition, exercise, skin care, um, meditation, breath work, sleep to maintain results of long-term, the, the surgery long-term? Yeah, definitely. And with, with surgery, you, you need three components. You have to have the good surgery, you have to have good exercise, and then you have to have good diet. And that's why we approach all of those with our patients. So they meet with Jamie. They also meet with our laser technician so that we can work on their skin. They work with me. And then we have our nurses that, that also work with the patient. We want to have not only a good surgery, but a good long-term result. You want to be able to maintain those results after you've had it. You're investing a lot of your time, your money, and your energy and emotions into this procedure. So we want to make sure that it's always successful for you. Thank you. Um, Janelle is asking um, a hormone question. She says, I'm 44 not menopausal, but of terrible PMS. Can hormones help decrease my PMS symptoms? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it definitely requires some blood work and, and consultation to see what all the factors that could be uh, weighing in on this. Um, and that's a common um, misunderstanding is that people think they can only benefit from, well, women, let's say, only think they can benefit from hormone replacement or hor hormone, we like to call it hormone optimization uh, once they're in, com in complete menopause. And um, really the, the, the data suggests completely different. So we really can optimize uh, women's hormones uh, when they're perimenopausal, you know, prior to menopause. And uh, a lot of times we do see relief uh, in these uh, symptoms. And that's just by balancing. We have to find the right balance. And, and, and I've seen that, that result many times. So the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, terrific. Um, Hara also is asking, in your aging medical practice with patients, I don't know if I'm going to get this quite right. Are you involved with Telomeres gene therapy, T E L O M E R A S E, gene therapy. Yes, this is a hot topic. No, we're not just yet. This is a, it's a hot topic. It's, it's new. There's still, tele, uh, if we can prevent telomeres, the telomere is part of the cell. If we can prevent the shortening of this, we potentially can reverse aging or, or slow down aging. Um, there's a lot of research that's being put into it right now. I'm not convinced, we're not convinced, I should say, that you know, the, the treatments are really up to speed yet with what we're trying to do. So it's something that we're watching very, very carefully. And, and, and when we feel there's a really good viable solution, uh, it's probably something that we'll introduce here, but no, not yet. And I, and I think it's important to point out that we only do approved treatments and above board treatments and scientifically based treatments. And once we do find that they are effective and that they are legitimate treatments, then we incorporate them into our treatment plan. Thank you. So I have a question about liposuction. So 
I know people like, again, 10 years ago, you know, 15 years ago, doing liposuction and having really questionable results, like lumps and bumps and people looked worse after liposuction yeah. uh, than they did after. Do you know what I'm talking about, Dr. Schaefer? I mean, certainly, and, and liposuction isn't something where you could go to just anybody for it. You wanna to go to somebody who's experienced in it. You wanna to go to a board certified plastic surgeon. And then you also wanna to talk to them about what type of liposuction they're having. There's been huge changes over the last 10 to 15 years in liposuction technology. It used to just be you're sucking with a big metal straw the, the fat out and you could get lumpiness or, or um, little tracks where if they went too close to the skin. But now we use a lot of energy-based technologies in addition to the actually sucking of the fat out. So whether you're treating that area internally with a laser and then sucking it out or ultrasound or radio frequency are the three most common ways to do it. And then we use a machine called power assisted liposuction, which vibrates really fast. So instead of the surgeon having to use brute force to suck the fat out, it's vibrating really fast, breaking up those fat cells and you're just sucking them or vacuuming them out. So you can get a much smoother result when you combine the energy technology and then also the power assisted liposuction. And you only do that with like a tummy tuck? I mean, is it only done in combination with tightening the skin? You know, it, it depends on the patient because if, if, all, if your skin is okay, but you just have extra fat there, then liposuction is good. If you have loose skin and you have fat, then you need to have a tummy tuck. Because if I suck fat out of loose skin, it's just gonna make it looser. Kind of like if you have a balloon and you let a little bit of air out, it's still uh, shaped like a balloon. If you have a balloon and you let too much air out, it starts to become you know, flaccid and wrinkly, and then, um, and then you're gonna have a problem. And that's in somebody in that situation, you need to do the tummy tuck too to remove the extra skin as well as taking the fat. Thank you. You know, I, I think like anything else, you know, we love before and afters, right? We love to see, well, this is what you were before. This is what you look like after. And there's a sense of immediacy that we want it and we want it now. It's the same thing with sexuality and people come to back to the body. They, they want like, they want like all their their years of, of suppressed sexuality or body non-acceptance or trauma or whatever's going on for them that have been going on for them for decades. It, there's this sense of immediacy that if I'm going to go and I'm going to do your program that in one week, it's all going to be better. And what's true is that around sexuality and body shame issues and embodiment is that it's a process. And you're, the one thing that we know is that the more you practice a process, um, the more you're going to stay in the process. And, and I think people look at the work that you guys are doing as, you know, I'm gonna go in, it's all gonna be get done, and then I'm, it's over. And I don't think it's true. I think the work that I'm going to be doing um, at your at your center, um, Dr. Shaper, is something that I'm probably going to be involved with for a couple of years. The same women who come to my retreats will stay with me often for three or four years. Mm -hmm. And so if you're thinking about doing these things, hormonal therapy or trying a body modification or any of these things that are out there, you know, what I encourage you is are you doing it from a place of love? Are you doing it? Um, Janelle has a question. Um, what, one second, Janelle. Um, can you post it in the chat room, darling? Po post it in the chat room, all right? Um, I'll see it better. So if you can post it from, if, if you can um, do this work from, from truly a place of loving your body, as opposed, if you don't, if you don't come from a place of, you know, thank you body, <laughs> thank you, um, then it's always gonna be the next thing. What can I do next? Because you're never gonna feel good about yourself. And so part of doing this work with the Schaefer Clinic is also really learning how to love your body. And, and so you get really clear about what your body is asking for. My body is really asking for the metabolic work. It's asking, it's saying, please, Pamela, 
make this happen for this body so that I can live longer and be healthier and more embodied. And my little beautiful narcissist inside of me that loves to be photographed and is a sex kitten and is going to be for the next 20 years or more is asking me to do small modifications to continue to keep me revealed, just to keep me revealed in the beauty that I have and the palette that I already have. And if you can look at this work in that way, is how are you maintaining and loving your palette? Do I make sense to you, Jamie and, and Dr. Schaefer? Does this fit at all with your philosophy of your work? Totally. You have to be doing the procedure, the treatments, or the interventions that Jamie does uh, for the right reasons. If, if you're coming in and wanting to modify something of your body and think it's going to change something else that's going on in your life, that's not, that's not the, uh, the, the right way. And so part of my job sometimes is to say no. If somebody's coming in and they're looking for something that's unrealistic or it's obvious that there, there's something else going on in their life and they're using this to substitute it, you know, I, I have to tell them no, because I, I need to make sure that, that they're gonna, that they're doing it for the right reasons and that they, their goals and expectations really meet what they're, what they're looking for. It's not like, like you said, it's a process. It's not like a drive-through, like you go to McDonald's and get a happy meal, right? It's a, uh, you, you're gonna, you're gonna become part of our family here because you're gonna, you're gonna come here, you're gonna get to know the staff, we're gonna get to know you really well. And what I love is part of my job is I get to see patients going through their cycles of life. Like I get to see people before they've even uh, have found a partner, then, then they're getting married, then they're having children, and then now uh, they're getting a facelift, they're getting older, you, you know, and seeing them go through those cycles of life is, is fantastic. That's it, what makes my job so amazing. I, I'm getting some beautiful comments. I'm Linda wrote, that's why we love you, Pamela, so thoughtful and giving to all your girls. Um, Howard just wrote, Pamela, these are right, wise words. If we do this work to enhance our bodies, we should be doing this for us and, and not for anyone else. And, and, you know, when you say yes, what, what I'm finding for myself, Dr. Schaefer and Jamie, so when women say yes to my retreats, yes to um, wanting to be more bodied um, and, and explore their own eroticism and lose their body shame, when they say yes, everything changes. It, it could be that the, the program, they're not even starting it for three months. But once they give their yes, everything is brighter and more excited. And I feel like the women coming to my retreats, we're working with the Schaefer Clinic. I, I have that feeling in my body. That's why I wanted to do this. That's why I wanted to be public about it and you know, I'm still uncomfortable and I'm just going to be honest with all of you, okay? This is uncomfortable. And, you know, I, I think, oh my God, everyone's going to really be staring at me now, you know, and really checking me out. And, um, and you know, you know, are people going to be having like back conversations about what Pamela is doing because she's all about body acceptance and now she's changing her body. And it's like, yes, and. It's my ability to love my body that's allowing me to do this and permission it. And so I, I just want to take the shame out and I'm practicing with you guys, okay? Like we're practicing this. You don't just get rid of shame and fear. Um, you have to practice it and you've got to practice talking about it in the same way you practice talking about, you know, your relationship with your eroticism. And so I just want to encourage you to you know, look a little deeper and know that this, you know, I, I keep saying it's not your mother's hormones therapy. It's not your mother's plastic surgery. The, the feeling is so different. And I'm, I'm actually like really turned on. Like my arousal is like really high around all this. Maybe it's the testosterone. I don't know. I mean, it's already in my ass. So, you know, I don't know, maybe it's kicked in, but I feel kind of high over this. And I'm a little scared. I mean, I was scared, Jamie, when you put in the, um, when you put in the pellet, he, he had to make a little incision um, in, in my upper behind. And, you know, it took a little courage um, to do it. And 
I was a little anxious and I kind of felt a little woozy afterwards and you gave me coconut water and I was okay. And, you know, we don't want to, I don't want to whitewash this and, and say that this is all going to be super easy. I mean, I didn't have fun on the Prolon diet. It wasn't a fun thing for me. I didn't like the asparagus soup. Um, you know, I couldn't wait, like day four was happening and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I was like cheating with stalks of celery, you know? I was like, I'm gonna have celery. You can't stop me from having celery. And um, so this is work. And I just wanna say that, and this is like facing your own fears and, and, and finding your courage. And I can tell you, I'm going to be nervous on August 3rd. And I'm going to be scared of the anesthesia. And I'm going to be scared about, you know, all the things that everyone's going to be scared about. And I'm going to have those feelings too. But I want this so bad for myself. That I'm going to find the courage to stay with this. And I just want you to know that if you want any of these things, that it's different. Um, Janelle, did you write... Oh, Lisa, come on. You love the fast and the food. <laughs> Lisa lived through this with me. Um, so, Janelle, I don't see your question. Are you still here? She had her hand up. And I don't know. She was the person, Janelle, Janelle. No, I don't see your question, Janelle. So, I'm just going to assume that that was an old hand up and that we we answered your question. Does anyone else have any questions about this? Um, chat, it's empowering when you make a decision for yourself that you can own and feel more like you. It's all good and you rock for deciding this and owning it and sharing it fearlessly. Okay, just so we can be clear, Linda, it's not so fearlessly, okay? It's not so fearlessly. There's lots of fear, and uh, you know, and and I'll be damned if I'm going to be shamed or be made small, and then I'm not going to share this because every time I share, somebody else wins. So we permission each other. Um, J Jamie, Dr. Schaefer, is there anything else you would like to add to this conversation that you haven't had a chance to add? I think just, just any, anybody who's apprehensive or scared, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We're, you know, we're available either in person, Zoom consultation, on the phone, either with one of us or we have great uh, support staff. And, you, you know, we really want you to feel comfortable and it's very low pressure. Don't feel if you come in that you're going to have to have a procedure done. We're, we're very happy for you to say no or that you want to think about it. And because we respect that everybody's different and everybody has their own timeline. And, um, you know, we just want you to feel comfortable. Um, thank you. And Hara is, is commenting, I guess she's been doing a lot of the Prolon. Um, she says, I like Prolon 1 and Prolon 2 foods more than the Prolon Pro. Yes, that's what I was on, which you were on. Yes, that's true. I was on the Pro. Um, after you do a few cycles of Prolon fasting, you clear your body of toxins and the Prolon fast become easier. So full disclosure, I, my husband, I think, was on Prolon too. And um, he lost 10 pounds in the five days. And I liked, I was coveting his food because he had like tomato soup and squash and stuff. Um, otherwise, our foods were the same. We had the same kinds of foods in it. Um, and I'm going to do another round. I have a whole month in Palm Springs. I'm doing four private retreats and um, I want to do another round. I'm like, I don't want to do it. I'm just gonna be clear, okay? I don't want to do it. It wasn't so much fun for me and I love the results. And now we talk about leading into the yellow. That's something that we do guys is that red is stop, green is like walking into Whole Foods and yellow is that place of discomfort. And we encourage our women to be in the yellow. And because that's where the learning is, that's where the change is. And so I'm committing to being in the yellow with the Schaefer Clinic and, um, and doing it and sharing it with the world. And I encourage all of you to, to not, not be stuck with the eyes that are in front of you looking at your case. 
And there's some real cutting edge stuff out there and not everybody has it. Not everyone has it. And if you're not in New York, where these guys are located, they can do a Zoom call with you. They can get, you can get your blood work done with a local doctor. They, there's a, they can work with you virtually. Doesn't have to be in person, except of course, if you're doing a body modification, that would be kind of hard for Dr. Schaefer um, to reach through, through the glass. Um, we can do that erotically sometimes, but we can't do it with the plastic surgery. And I'm advocating that Dr. that the Schaefer Clinic um, start to put together. So I'm just gonna like put my idea out there, okay? Are you gonna make a face? Am I gonna get in trouble? If I get in trouble? Okay, so I have this like idea, especially for my out-of-state women. If you come in for the day and you know, if you came in for the day like three times a year um, to get your hormone treatment, to do any procedures that you want to do, and then do the rest through Zoom, I think it's worth the trip. I've not seen a center like this, and I've really been looking for two years. This is not a new problem for me. This is something I've been working with for a few years. And again, just like it's worth the trip to find me it's worth, I would have gone, these guys were in California or in Dallas, Texas. I would be traveling to them. I've never seen anything like it. And I had a facial today. Um, I haven't had a facial in a long time. I had a facial today that was extraordinary. And they were using equipment um, i never heard of before. And my skin looks amazing. It was a beautiful experience. The esthetician was sweet and lovely. And I half fell asleep, except when they were doing the incredible laser lights on my skin. And I felt like I was in like some kind of Star Trek movie. Um, it was so cool. So that there's really cutting edge and it's there. And take advantage of the consultation that they're offering. Click the links, book the appointments, get your discount. We all like the damn discount, you know, get the goodies and explore whatever part of this is calling to you. And, you know, Jamie, thank you You're so much. I didn't give you a chance. Any last words that you wanted to say? Uh, no, I think, you know, we said it all. I, we'd love to see you. I love doing this. I love meeting new patients and, and seeing if I can help them and work with them. And I, and I think, uh, both Dr. Schaefer and I really do like going on these journeys together with the patients. Uh, if I didn't, or if we didn't, we wouldn't do this. So I'd love to hear from, from any of you, uh, see if we can help you and, and work together. And thank, thank you, you, Pamela. No, my pleasure. And thank you, Dr. Schaefer, for having the vision um, for this clinic. You, 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 you can't imagine this clinic. Uh, beautiful it is. It's three floors with extraordinary views. Um, the aesthetic of the clinic reflects the aesthetic and the professionalism and the care that as a patient I've been receiving. And again, it's all about the container, right? We all know that. People do the work with me. No, it's all about the container. And I'm gonna, like, this is big for me. Like, I'm really like jumping on. And I'm excited. I'm turned on. And thank you for creating this and creating a place where I can come and other people can come, men and women. Because um, men are doing testosterone and they're doing all the things. It's not just women. You, you guys are treating lots of men. All the hormone stuff we talked about with I'm, women. I'm a client too. What was that? I get the hormones too. You get the hormones too. Yeah. So, you know, everybody's doing it. We just got to be talking about it a little bit more so we can erase the fear and then we can get the information. I never heard of peptides before. I never heard of any of this stuff. And it's not because I've been so busy, um, you know, running around the world, turning women on to their orgasm. Um, it's because it's just not out there. Um, unless you're really deep into this work. So um, I think it's time to close. Um,
something is not a part of Back to the Body and would like to learn more as well. Um, Kasha, could you also post a link um, to Back to the Body and for a free consult with us? We do have one spot, I think, open in our Santa Fe retreat in September. And um, we also have two spots open in our Costa Rica retreat in January. We're, we're booked all the way through. Our Mexico, got, our Mexico mastery retreat is sold out and um, we are offering privates as well. So you can book a consult with us and make this a part of a complete journey for you. So when we talk about coming back to the body, like really think about what that is for you. So thank you, Kashia, for posting that. And um, a member of our team would be happy to speak with you. And um, if anyone has questions more about my journey, you can email me at Pamela. Back, can you put my email, Kashia, Pamela, back to the body.org and follow Jamie and the Schaefer Clinic. Um, can you put in the chat your Instagram? Do you know how to do that? Put your Instagram accounts. And Kasha, can you put um, at the Pamela Madsen? So follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. And um, I love their accounts because they're putting a lot of the information up on there. And I'm going to be writing about all of this. Um, I think for the next two years, you can watch me um, on this journey, but I don't think it's going to be over in two years. Just like my erotic evolution isn't over. It just keeps growing. So I'm grateful, Dr. Schaefer. I'm grateful, Jamie, for you making the time in your busy lives to do this. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This has been fantastic tonight. I think it's a great topic to talk about and hopefully uh, we can do it again soon. I'm hoping just people are watching. If you sign up for my newsletter, um, and you'll get like free videos and all kinds of goodies. You, you won't be dependent on an Instagram ad or whatever. If that's how you found us, you'll, you'll get it in the newsletters. Um, and we will be doing this again. I'm gonna do it post-surgery. I'm hoping to do this either in late August with these guys, do a check-in, see how I'm doing and um, talk more about these subjects um, or in the beginning of September. So we're going to be doing this again. I'm going to invite you to follow me. And I'm going to be honest about it. I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm not going to like pretend stuff for you. So, you know, I hated Prolon, especially on day four. And I'm doing it again. And it was scary getting a pellet put in my butt. And I'm really glad I did it. And so I'm, I'm going to talk what's real about my experience so that you know what to expect when you do this. So lots of love from my heart to your heart um, until we meet again. Thank you, Jamie. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a great night. And um, I didn't check the chats. Just, I'm, I think we're all good. I think we have everything up here. And thank you. This was helpful and informative. Thank you for your super presentation. Um, and, and there are people who are curious about ED and how this would help. Um, people saying, yes, they're gonna check this out for sure. And, you know, some, you know, 90% fear, 1% courage. I love Prolon. I mean, I mean, Hara is, she's lost 25 pounds since I've seen her in Key West at a retreat. So I love the comments. Thank you, everybody. And um, we're gonna say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Could you stop recording?